Hi, everyone, and welcome to Wildcard Wednesday. My name is Ben Pulowski. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today. So our topic for today is drivers, are you ready? We're looking at the forthcoming ELD mandate on December 18th and uh, just some of those last minute things that drivers need to be aware of uh, that will be a part of their daily routine as of December 18th and help them to remain in compliance. Uh, I'm joined today by Jobin Thialchira, who is one of our ELD engineers. So he is going to be presenting today. Uh, uh, so that having been said, I will uh, pass it over to Jobin. Take it away. Hey everyone, um, my name is Jobin, like Ben said. I'm here to talk about um, what drivers need to do um, before they use our solution and during and the time they use our solution, you know, when they're out on the road, logging in and logging out. So agenda for today is before you begin, what needs to be done, what the things we need to know when logging into the Geotab Drive, what are the things you can do when you're once in the Drive app in terms of like shipments, edits, malfunctions, and diagnostics, what to do in a really sighted inspection, and things to know when logging out as well. So before you begin, you need to obtain the Geotab Drive app. You can find this on any of the app stores, both on the Android and the Apple app stores. Some of the documentation that you will need in the cab or online available to you in case you're in a roadside inspection or you run into malfunctions and diagnostics. And just in general for the use of the app, you'll need the diagnostic events and malfunctions sheet, one pager. You'll need the ELD manual. And then you'll also need the data transfer description. So this is a troubleshooting one pager, which also has a little snip at the end that you can hand to the officer and tells them how to use the app and how to audit a driver when they're getting inspected. It's also a great idea to have paper logs as a backup just in case anything happens to the ELD or your tablet or mobile solution you're using to run the Geotab Drive app on. So logging in, so that's the screenshot right there on what it looks like when you open up the Drive app. Um, you'll have to enter your username and password. Um, those are the only two things uh, a driver should most likely need to be concerned about when logging in. Uh, we do have the database and server option as optional. Um, this is mostly for resellers, uh, not really for drivers when they want to use their same ID and user login profile to log into different databases. It's better to uh, specify which database you're trying to log into so you're not accidentally logging into a different database. Once you've logged in, um, the first option you'll have is to select your vehicle. So there's three uh, things you can do on the screen. Um, if, it's, uh, if it's the previously used vehicle is the same vehicle you'll be using currently, um, it will most likely be populated, as you see right there in the screenshot, where it says Dispatch 3KD. Um, since that was the last vehicle I used, um, like the day before, <clears throat> it's going to populate and show, hey, is this the vehicle you want to drive today? If it's not, <clears throat> you can select the select another vehicle option, which will allow you to then search for a different vehicle in your fleet. You can just type in the name of the vehicle, the serial number, and even license plate or VIN number if you have those populated on the database. You can use those to search as well. If you're not driving a vehicle and you're just logging in because you're working on the site and you don't know which vehicle you're going to be logged into later on in the day, you can select no vehicle. This will allow you to go on duty and off duty, uh, but you can't go into drive status or sleep with until you've selected the vehicle. After you've selected your vehicle, your screen will go through the workflow process where it will first ask you um, hey, hey uh, about your unassigned log. So what that means is and how unassigned logs work is if the vehicle was ever driven in the past um, where a driver did not sign in, so let's see a mechanic moved it or a tow truck moved it <clears throat> or it was just moved by some driver just to get it out of the way so they can access a different truck or something else in the parking lot. If no one signs in, it's going to create duty status logs based off of e the ELD spec made by the FMCSA. So it's going to create drive logs and on-duty logs based off of the, that vehicle's movement. If, and, and since no one's logged in, it's, those logs are going to be unassigned. So once they log into the app, they're going to be prompted, hey, this vehicle moved at this time, 
and then again at this other time do you, are, is this done by you and if it's not then you can skip it but if it is clean those logs and then proceed to now verifying your logs this is where you'll be verifying your previous seven to eight day or even 14 days in the Canadian rule set where you'll it'll give you a rundown of what your logs are and which ones you haven't verified and you can go day by day and verify those logs by just simply clicking on the button at the top of the of the daily logs to verify them. After unassigning and verifying logs, the last step is your DVIR. This is where you'll have to do a DVIR or you'll be prompted to do a DVIR for your vehicle and your trailer. <clears throat> so these DVIRs are completely customizable. You can make your own custom list of uh, what you think uh, drivers should be looking for when they do an inspection like this. And drivers just have to go through this list uh, and inspect the vehicle, identify any defects, and then go on with their day. Just to keep in mind, when you do a DVIR, it will put you in on duty automatically if you do it within the, the workflow itself. So now let's talk about pages in the Drive app itself. So one of the first pages that you can access from the dashboard is the vehicle page. So you'll see a little vehicle icon and if you click it, you'll get to this page that's displayed in that screenshot on the side. Here you can change your asset. So if you change, if you need to change vehicles during the mid middle of your day, you can do that right here. You can change your trailers and add new trailers here. And you can, my, you can detach trailers and shipments by clicking the minus button as well. You can, here's another place where you can add shipments, details as the drivers go on for, throughout their day for tracking purposes. And all this will be shown in the compliance print in terms of your trailers, your asset, and your shipments. The edits page. So this is a page where all your logs are, list, are in list form for, our, for your whole cycle, whichever, if it's seven days or eight days. Here is where drivers can then click on their logs and do changes to their logs in terms of making edits to change the different statuses or duration of the log or or even add the adding new logs. So you can you can see here a plus button at the top corner of the Drive app right here, and that's where you can use to add new logs instead of editing already uh, created ones. So once you click on a log, you'll see something similar to what you uh, see in that screenshot below. And anything marked by a pencil icon, you're able to edit. Keep in mind, you can't extend the duration of any logs to overlap and reduce the time of any automatic drive logs. It won't let you do that. And any edit that you do, you have to annotate uh, and give a reason why you're making this edit in the first place. So now, diagnostics and mile functions. This is uh, one of the newest features of the Drive app. I think it's, av it's available now on the November release. So if any customers are on the November build, they, you may have already seen banners like what you see in that screenshot there, where depending on the banner, it'll be red or yellow. So if you have diagnostics, it'll be yellow. If you have malfunctions or malfunctions and diagnostics, the bar will be red. So what this tells you is, hey, you have something um, that's not working properly in terms of your diagnostics or malfunctions. And if you click on that banner, it'll bring you into more details about which diagnostics or malfunctions you have, which ones you're, are you able to clear, um, and things of that nature. Keep in mind that depending on the malfunction, the driver has to let contact their carrier or manager and let them know, hey, I'm seeing a malfunction here. I'm not able to clear it. Um, can we rectify this issue, or do I have to you know, revert to paper logs until this problem is resolved? So roadside inspection, from our drive out perspective and in the November release, we've introduced a new feature that uh, will be available as we get closer to that December 18th deadline. So right now you'll see on the drive app, if you go to the options page from the, from the HOS logs page, if you click on the options tab, it'll bring you, and if you scroll down, you'll see a transfer button. That transfer button has a web services and an email option. Both of those options are right now not sending information to FMCSA. The web services button doesn't work because FMCSA hasn't opened that up on their side. And the email button right now is configured to email yourself until FMCSA you know, starts accepting emails as well. So those two buttons are right now not functional, but you can see them in the November build. And once we get closer to that December 18th deadline, 
they will be operational and you'll be able to email the FMCSA uh, directly or send them the file, the ELD output file. For whatever reason, if um, they uh, want to see your logs during the inspection or off the side of the road, you can click on uh, the button below the transfer button, which is the compliance report button. Once you click on this, it gives you uh, it gives the DOT officer a nice view of all your logs, the graph, uh, the ELD output uh, file at the bottom, and any annotations you've made. And on top of that, it'll also put any unassigned logs at the very bottom so that they can inspect as to why you didn't claim these unassigned logs or if you're if a driver is, you know, logging out midday and doing trips to save on drive time, so officers can check that. The only thing that the officer can't, uh, we don't display, sorry, in the in the report is our violations. That's up to the officer uh, to calculate and determine himself if the driver is in fact violations. We hide all violations in that view and we leave it up to the officer to determine um, if the driver is in violation or not. A couple of last things I want to just run through on what you can do in the Drive app is the graphs view. So this is something you can find on the HOS, HOS page in the Drive app under the Graphs tab section. It shows you 24-hour periods of how, what your logs were in Graph view. The traditional view you see on those paper logs, those with those four lines for drive status, off-duty, on-duty, and sleep or birth. Under the Options tab as well, you're able to enable and disable exemptions as needed. For example, the uh, adverse driving condition, um, uh, personal conveyance and yard move are like the three more popular one exemptions that you can use and those can be enabled and disabled from the options tab. The settings tab is a great place for drivers to go if they're running into issues or not seeing what they're expecting to see on the drive app. So if they're say if they see hey where are my drive logs for the past hour um, I don't see them here one thing they can do is click check for updates. This will force a sync uh, with our app to the server and grab all the logs from the server that haven't been displayed on the drive app for whatever reason, if it's coverage or maybe an, an issue or a bug. <clears throat> this will cause a forced sync. If the sync fails, that means you know coverage may be an issue, but if it completes and you're not, that should allow you to get the most updated version of your logs page with all your logs populated if you click that button and it successfully renders. Um, one other thing drivers can do is if they run into issues on the Drive app, a great thing to do is send a bug report. You can do this in the settings page as well. When you send a bug report, it gives us all the data for the past 10, 15 minutes of what the app is going through, what it's thinking, and this will help us identify bugs. We do obviously send reports automatically but not for every scenario. So in some situations, sending a bug report can be vastly beneficial for myself and our development team on narrowing down what the issue is possibly. Now logging out. To log out, you tap your username or the, or the profile icon at the top right-hand corner of the app, and this will allow your driver to log out. On that same uh, icon, that's where you would press to add code drivers as well, just uh, as an FYI. And then from there, once you initiate the logout process, it will prompt you to verify your logs, do a DVIR, a post-trip DVIR, and then, then ask you to choose your status um, if it's not off-duty already. So if you're an on, sleeper birth, or drive, it'll ask you, hey, do you want to change your status before logging out? We, uh, we make sure that drivers don't log out while in drive status because that can cause huge issues with their availability and cause a bunch of violations that don't need to be there. So we make sure drivers are logging out in any other status besides the drive during that logout process. So yeah, that uh, concludes my uh, presentations on what drivers should uh, expect and what they need to know and do one, as they you know operate the app. Great, thanks, Jobin. Uh, we've uh, we've had a lot of good questions uh, come through here, so we'll start going through some of those. Uh, so we've had a couple of questions on paper logs. So one question that came up, are drivers required to keep paper logs or is it just suggested? Uh, another note saying, I thought the FMCSA said that drivers have to have 30 days of paper logs on hand at all times. 
Could you uh, could you speak to that point? It's uh, recommended that they have paper logs. I'm not sure if it's mandated. Um, I can double check, but uh, it's just a recommendation from our side, just in case they run into any malfunctions or diagnostics, and they're forced to move off of the ELD and onto paper, that they have the option to do so, and they're not stuck on the side of the road because they're not able to operate now because there's a failure in the ELD or on the tablet side of things. The other questions about the 30 days, driver is not required to have 30 days of logs with them on hand. The carrier or their home terminal in which the driver operates needs to have 30 logs of the driver in just in case for, for auditing purposes and things of that nature. And so, for example, like if a driver operates out of a home terminal and it's not the headquarters, that home terminal will need 30 days of logs. Now, the headquarters will then have to also have six months of logs that they need to retain for all their drivers as well. So keep that in mind. A couple questions here on coverage. So uh, if you could speak to uh, what happens with both the changing of the duty status as well as DVIR when, uh, when the driver is not in an area with cell coverage. Right. So you can do full functionality in terms of DVIR when out of coverage. That's done locally on the tablet. Obviously, it won't update to the server, won't let the MyGeotype side of things know until coverage is gained and the app is able to resync with the server and let the server know, hey, uh, this driver did do a DVIR at this time. Uh, in terms of automatic duty status logs, those won't happen in real time when you're out of coverage. But you don't, the driver doesn't need to worry for two reasons once uh, December 18th comes in. Uh, we will repopulate those logs once coverage is gained all those logs where the driver moved and stopped out of coverage will then repopulate. And the second reason is we have, we'll have malfunctions and diagnostics flagging, letting the officer know that, you know, inspecting you and letting the driver know that, hey, uh, you are in out of coverage and this is why uh, the app is reacting the way it is and not auto automatically updating your duty statuses. So it's covered from both perspectives when you uh, add in the malfunctions and diagnostics. So it's not something the drivers need to be worried about. The best recommendation I would have just to help everything move smoothly when, uh, when you're out of coverage and operating is just create manual logs. And that'll just create, uh, make sure your availability and everything is up to date. And then once you come back into coverage, all those logs will get re, uh, like we'll still recreate all the automatic logs and insert them in amongst the manual logs as well. So the driver doesn't need to worry about um, out of coverage issues, but yes, automatic duty statuses don't happen in all out of coverage in real time. Uh, there's a feature um, or an update that's in the process of rolling out right now where when uh, a carrier edits a log, the driver has to approve mm -hmm. or reject that log. Uh, where in GeoTab Drive and when does that come up? So if um, so, how it works is if um, someone on the administrator side uh, on my GeoTab pulls up a driver's logs that are not their own, it has to be not their own, modifies them in any way, the driver will get a prompt on the logs tab um, that, hey, this edit um, was done. Do you choose to accept or reject this edit? And then from the logs tab, it'll be in yellow right at the very top, they can accept or reject. Um, those edits. We will also be introducing the carrier edits in the workflow as well. So it will be, you know, after you verify, I think the next option will be to then accept or reject any of the carrier edits. So I think it's part of the login and maybe also part of the logout workflow. Is there a limit to how long, so when you log into the app, um, it'll prompt you with a, a list of unassigned logs. Is there a limit to how long unassigned logs are going to stay in that list? I think we look back at the past 14 days and display those logs for you. So that's the limitation right there, the 14 days. So yeah, if you have any logs within 14 days that are unassigned, it'll show up on that. Okay, and and of course um, you can uh, another way to to clean up that list a little bit is by going in on the admin side and annotating logs 
that uh, are to be left unclaimed. If you annotate the logs with why they're being left unclaimed, that's fine. That'll remove them from that list. Uh, and, uh, and that's part of the mandate as well. And you can do that in bulk. You don't have to edit one log at a time with those annotations from the admin side. A question related to that, is there a way to unassigned logs to un uh, unidentified driver in a bulk way? Yeah, there is. Uh, in the admin side, there's a little check mark. When you view the duty status logs, there's a check mark in the upper right corner of the screen, uh, which you can use to select and then edit logs in bulk. When taking the 30 minute break before eight hours, should the driver select off duty or sleeper berth? So does, does that matter, Jobin? For a 30 minute break, it doesn't matter. Um, both will satisfy the 30 minute break condition. Okay. So a question here, has anyone else uh, using iPhones or iPads reported a bug with the uh, bug report and annotations? We have multiple experiences with multiple iOS devices where the annotation field will populate or not. Then when the add button is pushed, the annotation field empty. So, uh, it sounds like definitely want to open up a support ticket on that. Uh, Jobin, have you heard of anything like that happening with other iOS devices? Yeah, actually, um, I was um, told about that bug yesterday. So, yes, that's something. It's news to me since yesterday, but we know of the issue. Um, a support ticket is great to uh, help see how many people have been impacted by this bug, but we are aware of the bug. Okay, great. Uh, this is an excellent question. Uh, can drivers uh, do drivers have to log out every day, or can they just tap sleeper berth and not log out? So they should absolutely 100% log all of the way out of the app every single day. Uh, Jobin, do you have anything to add to that? No, it's the it's it's the best thing to do. Um, it allows this. For example, there's things like GPS bounce. Uh, false readings, and those are all real life scenarios that happen, right? So, if for whatever reason the driver is in sleep or birth, he's six hours into his uh, nap or sleep, sorry, um, we get GPS drift or some sort of anomaly that caused the driver, I mean, the ELD to think it's moving, even if it's for a half a second. We're going to put that driver into drive, and now he doesn't satisfy his brake, and now he can't edit that log. He has to call, um, like, uh, the administrators to unassign that log so that he can get on the road. So it's the best thing to do is if you're, you know, off duty for, if you're trying to go off duty or sleep for more than 30 minutes, just sign out and uh, so that nothing can be impacted uh, or not, your logs can't be impacted or that break can't be impacted. Uh, are carriers required to print driver logs and keep hard copies? Yeah, so you can have an electronic copy or hard copy, but if you are allowing drivers to carry an electronic copy, make sure they have it downloaded onto the hardware itself. And it's not like a link that loads up a page or something like that, because they need to have those documents available to them at all times in and out of coverage. And if they're not able to access those documents out of coverage, uh, they're going to be in a lot of trouble if they get uh, inspected. Uh, I have a situation here. There's uh, so the the uh, icon in the upper right of the app that shows if anything is malfunctioning. Uh, we have a red icon there under power disconnected, but the unit is currently up and running. Uh, how can that red icon be removed? Probably want to start with checking installation just to, to see if that is valid, right? Exactly. Check installation. Make sure that ELD's red light is on. Um, as long as that light is on, the di diagnostics should clear. If it's a power malfunction now that's different that's something you have to clear or the driver has to clear with an action by clicking the clear button for that malfunction and the reason why they have that in the first place is we detected 30 minutes of more of uh, the ELD being not powered while the vehicle is moving so uh, another question here on uh, the driver uh, accepting or rejecting edit so again that that happens when you go into the uh, the log tab within the uh, uh, the HOS screen. Does the driver have the option to accept edits in bulk or do all edits have to be accepted individually? All edits have to be accepted individually. We want to make sure the driver 
uh, is knowingly accepting these uh, these edits and not, oh, there's an easy way out of here and we can just uh, accept all that, accept all and just not review these logs. We want to make sure drivers are actually reviewing them and accepting them uh, with a reason. Uh, if you are 150 air miles exempt, you don't need to take a 30 minute break. But when you go beyond the 150 mile radius, we need to show the break. Is there an option we can switch from exempt to interstate logs? Uh, that would be the uh, short haul exemption add in, right? Yes, exactly. So there's an add in, I think it's available on the marketplace. It's free. Um, I think it's like a it's click once as well. Like you can just click it and I'll just add it to your database and for those drivers. Uh, so that they're able to, you know, switch. They can just simply click on the add-in, and it's just one button in, within the add-in, and I'll swap them between those two rule sets. Just keep in mind that if you want those drivers to use that, um, make sure they have their user clearances uh, modified. You can't use the default drive app user clearance if they're using add-ins and things like that. You have to enable. You have to make a custom clearance using the drive app clearance, and enable one of the one of the clearances, the one called um, and you, uh, allow user to edit their own options or something like that, so which allows them to edit their own options. Yeah, so um, uh, again, that, that is a free add-in that's available in the Geotab Marketplace, geotab.com slash marketplace, or you can access it through your database. Uh, but if you go to the Marketplace and just search for short haul, uh, that, will, that will come up. Um, is the prompt for, so accepting and rejecting logs, is the prompt for edited logs immediate or uh, does it appear during log in, log out along with verifying logs? The driver is not prompted um, by requested edits, but it's, it is part of the log in, log out and, if, and part of the logs page. So this is, a, this is a big question. So we've been referring to create a manual log. Uh, and by that we mean you know, reaching out and pressing the drive button as opposed to um, the drive log being created automatically. Uh, other ELD applications uh, providers link via Bluetooth with the ELD device. What is the philosophy for Geotab's way of reconciling at the cloud? It was just a decision made by our CEO to help uh, reduce uh, drivers from, I guess, falsifying logs, and to also help us retain logs uh, on the server where it's most secure, and we're able to do all the processing and everything on that side. So we're not relying on the tablet in any way to do any of the calculations or processing. Um, since our solution is bring your own device, we don't want to be dependent on which device uh, like that you guys bring to the table, right? Because when we do our testing over here, we're using, you know, like Samsung devices, Apple devices, you know, well-known devices, but that doesn't mean there are, that we, we don't, we want to limit our customers to only using those devices. If we say bring your own device, that you can get, you know, a third-party device, not a mainstream device, and as long as it supports Android or iOS, we want to be able to support you guys. And those are some of the main reasons. I understand that there's a bunch of frustration uh, with customers and resellers around how we don't work as well out of coverage. Those are things, we're, uh, hurdles that we're trying to jump uh, in next year, and we're trying to maybe use a, a backup wired solution or some other method along with the ELD solution to help uh, customers that operate out of coverage frequently with their logs. Just had this problem with adding a log to a driver and he had to accept the log. We found out he has to tap on the yellow log created and then accept or not. Has to do this on each yellow log created before he can verify that day's log. So that's that's exactly what Jobin was talking about a couple moments ago where we, we want to put it, we want to protect the driver as much as possible. Um, we want to give the driver the ability to look at each and every single log that is edited and accept or reject that log. So uh, that 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 sounds like part of the uh, the typical workflow there. We just want to make sure that everything is accurate. Um, do you have anything to add to that, Jobin? Yeah. So, like with our solution, um, 
we want to make sure like requested edits are not even happening at all or to at a minimum in the first place. If there is a lot of requests happening for a driver within a day or within a cycle, I can improve or there's something on the customer side that needs to be improved in terms of training. Like we need to identify the reasons why there's you know more than two edits a day, for example, because in most cases there should be little to no edits in a day. Like a driver should get their automatic duty statuses created by us, do their breaks and their off duties and uh, sleeper berths manually, and and everything should just check through. And edits are only done when you know there's a training issue or something's not done properly. So. I don't see, uh, from my perspective, uh, like uh, a driver having to sit down every day and go through like 20 requested edits. Like that's unrealistic for the driver, uh, like from my side and like that shouldn't be happening. And if it is, something I think would need to be corrected from either Geotab side or from the training, uh, a training perspective. Uh, can you explain the 30, uh, the 30 minute break rule further? Uh, is a driver required to take a break after eight hours of being on duty or eight hours of driving? So so the way that the 30-minute break rule works, if this applies to the driver and to their selected rule set, is that um, the clock starts when they go on duty. After eight hours have passed, they cannot drive again until they take a 30-minute break where they are off duty. So I'll, I'll repeat that. The clock starts when they go on duty. Maybe they're when they're doing their DVIR. After eight hours have passed, they cannot drive again until they have taken a 30-minute rest period where they are off duty or in sleep or birth. Right. So, like, just to touch on that. Sorry, Ben. Mm -hmm. As soon as they go on duty, they can drive for eight hours straight and they'll have to take a break, or they can go on duty and just be unloading and loading trucks for eight hours straight in on duty, but then they can't drive at that eight hour mark unless they take a 30 minute break. So it doesn't matter what they do within that eight hour time frame. As soon as you start the clock, it's gonna roll uh, to eight regardless of what you're doing with that time. Uh, where can we get the three documents that the drivers need to carry in the truck? I actually just uh, pasted the link for the presentation that Jobin went through. I pasted that link into GoToWebinar. Um, so you have a link to that presentation and there are links in there to those three required documents. Uh, how close are we to fixing the problem where a driver is actually in Portland, Oregon, and the Geotab is showing them as being in Vancouver, Washington? Uh, I'm not sure I know what this is referring to. Do you? Um, I think that's actually fixed in the November release as well. Like I know that uh, ELD spec says that it has to show the closest city that you are to uh, that has a population of 5,000 or more but it doesn't take into consideration what jurisdiction you're in. In the November release, I think we do take that into consideration. So if you're operating in the States, we're gonna show you the closest you know, city in the States uh, to you, or if you're operating in Canada, we'll show the uh, closest Canadian city to you. Can the drivers download their logs from the app? So the best bet would uh, probably just be to retrieve them from the, uh, from the admin side. Exactly. Yeah, the drivers are able to print out a PDF or any yeah a printout of their app. Uh, I mean their logs from the My Geotab side. From um, the Drive app side, there's not there's no way of downloading the uh, the logs. Uh, when the carrier annotates and assigns an unassigned log, uh, is that counted as a carrier edit? So the driver may have numerous carrier edits. So carrier edits are only if you go from the driver to another driver. You won't get carrier edits if you're going from driver to unassigned driver. Okay, so so if I reassign an unassigned log, that's not going to show up as an edit to be. No, 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 that will, because the driver's then getting it. Sorry, but if, it, if you're taking something away from a driver, it's not going to give you the carrier edit. Okay, okay. On the fuel tracker add-in, can those be edited by admin? Um, to my knowledge, those fuel transactions that are logged through the fuel tracker add-in cannot be edited after the fact. Do you know that? I'm not 100% sure, but I think you're right, Ben. I haven't um, really looked at that add-in some time, but I don't think you can edit anything from 
that's done uh, that's been saved by the driver yeah based on uh, just I, I'm I'm also going off of memory here but I don't I don't recall ever seeing anything where you would uh, ha be able to edit a fuel transaction is it compliant to switch between intrastate and interstate rule sets I'm not sure about that one um, we'd have to get back to you on that one if you email eld at geotab.com um, someone will answer you that question after re reviewing the regulations. I, I don't know the, the answer off, by, off the top of my head. Uh, on unassigned trips report, can you edit them in bulk for training purposes? Uh, the unassigned trips report, if I'm thinking of the right thing, is, is uh, I believe, an outdated report that was in use some time ago. So for editing logs really any log edits that you're doing should be done from the duty status log screen in in my geotab uh how many days of logs will appear in my app so that uh that'll be based on your rule set so within the actual log screen it'll go back seven or eight days depending on the driver's rule set um, Verifying logs is a little bit different. Uh, unverified logs will appear for 14 days, regardless of the rule set. Uh, checking the HOS availability, is there a way you can only see the HOS availability on that area's drivers? Um, the only way that I can think of to do that would be by using the groups filter. So if you have your, uh, your drivers assigned to groups, you can apply the groups filter and then you can run the HOS availability report and you'll only see data for those drivers. Uh, is there a YouTube video or some kind of instructional on how to integrate the short haul exempt add-on into the Drive app? So that's all, uh, that is all available uh, in the marketplace. I don't believe we have a video on it, but um, there are instructions there on how to add it in. And as far as applying the exemption, there's just a giant button that says apply short haul exemption and you press it and it applies it. Uh, I'm sometimes seeing on the driver logs, driver disassociated with vehicle. What does that mean? This must be in the November release now. So we have some new logic here uh, to help drivers not be stuck in drive status. Because in November, we are disallowing all edits and removals of logs as according to FMCSA spec. So with that, we can't have drivers be stuck in drive status for whatever reason that may be. So when you see a log that says the driver has been disassociated, that means another driver selected that vehicle when the current driver was actually driving or whatever they were doing. Well, they were associated with the vehicle. It doesn't matter if they were driving or not. So once that driver gets disassociated from the vehicle. We have no idea what they're doing, but we wanna make sure they're not stuck in drive status. Um, so what we do is we put them in on duty. We let them know why we created this log, drivers are disassociated from the vehicle. And we also prompt the driver to select another vehicle or to select no vehicle if someone accidentally selects their vehicle or if they if the initial driver selected the wrong vehicle and now they're getting kicked out because driver two is actually driving that vehicle uh can you touch on the 150 mile radius rule and if a driver goes over uh, outside of that radius and needs to use logs there's nothing we do in terms of automation with that rule it's you stick you select that rule set and then we define the hours based off of that rule set you have to do your own due diligence to make sure that driver is following uh, that 50, 150 mile radius criteria. So what we recommend is create a zone around the home terminal that is that radius and then make a rule based off of that zone. And if, you know, if these vehicles or if these drivers exit that zone, send out an email and that's the only way to really uh, enforce and make sure those drivers are following that rule set or they all have to change their rule set once they exit that radius. Uh, so just a quick question on the HOS buttons, uh, SBD on, what do those mean? So uh, on would be on duty where the driver is working but not driving. So if they're doing paperwork or loading the truck, uh, D was uh, uh, driving. Uh, 
and then SB is for sleeper berth if they are sleeping in the vehicle. We've had a request here. I don't know if, if uh, we can do this at this moment, but we've had a request to go over the carrier edits. So to actually uh, go into GeoTab Drive and uh, show exactly what that workflow looks like. Uh, Job and I don't know if, if uh, we have an example of that or if that's something we can show, but we've had a request for that. That might be better to call in. I don't want to take up other people's time answering questions to go over this because it's not set up yet. It might be better. I would recommend they call into the support desk and or make a ticket and ask for that and we can show them that. Uh, how often will you be releasing software updates and how will we be informed when a software update is needed? So software updates happen almost every month. I would say a month and a half, realistically. We let the reseller there's no about two weeks in advance once we before we start upgrading and then we also try our best to let our ELD customers know two to three days after we've let the reseller know so we are trying our best to get the that out there that hey we're an upgrade is coming here is the what's new uh, on what the changes and uh, are for this upgrade uh, in terms of geotab drive and my geotab so we have a lot out there. If you subscribe to our blog posts and our, um, our My Geotab uh, subscriptions, that can help you get more updates on when we will be releasing upgrades. Uh, I have an instance here where uh, it says odometers do not match between, uh, it says app versus the ELD. I don't think that's right. Uh, so maybe if there's a situation where uh, you have the reporting in GeoTab Drive says one thing for the odometer, and then you have a different value in the database. Do you have any ideas on what could cause that? that could, if there's an offset that was applied on the database, um, we may not reflect it on the Drive app, but in, like it's intended that they are both aligned. So if it's not aligned, then let's create a support ticket and find out why. It could be that someone may have fiddled around with the My Geotab side because the Geotab Drive app pulls it straight from the engine and displays what the engine says, tells us. But in My Geotab, it does that initially. But if you fiddle around and change uh, the odometer, it can create offsets and it may not align with what we see on Geotab Drive. Uh, what should personal conveyance distance be set to? Is there a specific distance set by the FMCSA, or is it up to the customer? Completely up to the customer. Um, from the U.S. perspective in Canada, I think it's 75 kilometers. But in the U.S., it's completely up to the discretion of the carrier. Keep in mind, the DOT officer, when they do the audit, will know how long or and how far the driver was in personal conveyance. So it's better to be safe than sorry and put something realistic there than to put something, you know, almost close to unlimited that where a driver can just drive over 100 miles in personal conveyance. I don't know if that's acceptable for an officer, but in terms of regulations, there's no, there's nothing mandated on that. Uh, if you have drivers which are not set up with an email in the system, can they still send emails? from the smart device to the FMCSA or DOT officer? That's a great question, and yes, they can, but they won't be able to receive the email. So our, in our functionality, once it's enabled, they'll email yourself and the officer, so it just the driver won't receive the email. But that's not mandated. That's just a nice to have. So like a driver doesn't need to necessarily receive that email. It's more for the D making sure the DOT officer, the FMCSA, gets that. Can we use a PDF driver to save documents? So, so that would apply to the required documentation for the GeoTab Drive app. Um, so, so it just has uh, it has to be a, the documentation has to be accessible through the vehicle. Whether that's a hard copy, that's fine. Whether it is available uh, electronically through the phone or tablet, that's fine. You do want to make sure though that the documentation, if you're using it, if you're going to store it electronically, you have to make sure that it's still accessible when the device is outside of cell coverage. Um, so, so whatever means you, you want to use uh, is fine for that, but, but above all else, you need to make sure that it's accessible no matter what.
Uh, question on the short haul add-in. Uh, I've installed it. Where's the button to push? So that button uh, will appear in the GeoTab Drive app. So after uh, you have installed the add-in from the marketplace, when you log into GeoTab Drive on the dashboard of the GeoTab Drive app, uh, there will be a button that says short haul exemption and you can press that and it'll allow you to switch it. Uh, it may take a little bit of time for the add-in to populate through into the app. It shouldn't take too long, uh, but I mean, it's not gonna be available within seconds. So uh, that's how you access that. When a driver takes his 30 minute break, which button should be used for that? So for the 30 minute break, the driver would either need to be uh, off duty or in sleeper berth. Either one of those is fine. So we have here, not sure if this was covered, how do we track our driver's HOS on our GeoTab database? So this was, uh, today's webinar was designed to focus more on the driver side of things. We actually do have a previous recorded webinar uh, that I am pulling the link up for right now as we speak. And I am putting that into the chat box. So that uh, YouTube link that I just put in there, uh, that is a previous webinar, a walkthrough of the admin side of ELD uh, that shows you how to manage logs, edit logs, reassign, all of that. So you can check out that webinar for that information. So thank you to everyone for, uh, for your patience here. We are getting a lot of questions. So we have some clarification on the interstate rule. Once on the interstate rule, you must remain on that rule for seven days after, no matter what you are doing, be it intrastate or agriculture. After seven days, you may switch rules. So that's related to the previous question about switching between interstate and intrastate. Uh, we're being told once you're on interstate, you must remain on interstate for seven days. When and if a company is in exemption, if pulled over by a DOT officer, what does the driver show as proof of exemption? That's a good question. Well, they'll, the DOT officer will know what rule sets and exemptions they're on or that are actively applied to that driver. That's the only proof that we have from a drive app perspective. They need some other written proof to like show that, hey, like X, Y, and Z are the reasons why we're allowed to use this exemption. There's nothing in the drive app that will tell you the driver the officer that we can only just show hey this driver is on this rule set which allows for this exemption or this driver has applied this exemption at this time that's all our drive app can really do we can't prove if a driver should or should not be using the exemption so uh, we know that we we haven't been able to get to everyone's questions if you do have any further questions uh, please just reach out to uh, whoever it is who you normally contact. If that's your support rep, if that's your reseller, if that's your, uh, your account manager. We try and provide as much information as we can in these webinars, but for one-on-one -on -one assistance, we strongly, strongly recommend following those channels. Um, we thank you all very much for attending today and, and asking for so many great questions. And uh, Jobin, thank you for your time and thank you for presenting. Thanks everyone and uh, hope you have a great day.